Hey everybody, real quick before we jump into the dev vlog, let us know in the comments if you have any questions about our development process, our games, us, and we'll put out a little Q&A video in the near future, either as a standalone or attached to the next vlog. Welcome back! This is the second ever dev vlog for The Siege of Jomdo, Studio Hipsword's next big indie game project. From the creators who gave you Hip Witch. And, and this, I guess. To reiterate, The Siege of Jomdo is a narrative role-playing game inspired by the Chosen Dynasty, in which you must defend a lovely island village from conquerors. Last time we talked about the origin story of the whole project up until now. Today's vlog is going to be a little less all-encompassing. Instead, we're going to talk about the last month or two of development in more granular detail. In short, what have we been up to lately? Well, we've been putting together the first playable build in quite some time. So, what does that mean? What even is a build? And how'd it go? Well, stay tuned to find out. What is a build? Essentially, a build is a version of a game you can actually launch and play. In this context, you could call it a work-in-progress demo. That may seem odd. You might be thinking, wait, so you can't just test drive your game whenever you want? You need a whole development push just to get it running? Well, yeah, kind of. You see, game dev is a creative discipline made up of like a hundred other creative disciplines, which are entirely distinct from one another. You've got writing, programming, art, music, game design, UI, and more, all sitting under this one umbrella. It's not uncommon for these different areas of development to get a little out of sync with each other. For example, while our programmers were building the tools we need to import the story script into the actual game engine, the writers were just barreling ahead writing the character scenes in the meantime. More on that later. The point is, game dev isn't often a very linear process. Sometimes puzzle pieces just aren't ready to connect yet. There is a nice maneuverability in each part of the team just working on whatever's currently available to them, but there are drawbacks too. Most glaringly, we can become disconnected from the role our work will play in the full composite thing that is the Siege of John Doe. Like, how does this song feel in its actual in-game context? How impactful does this scene feel half an hour into a play session? Without playtesting a build, we don't have the answers to these questions. That's why we decided it was important to establish a greater concerted initiative to build... builds on a more regular basis. So that's the rationale, but what content was actually going to be in our February build. Well, we actually can't put everything we've made so far into the build because, after all, as I already said, different parts of development are out of sync. I mean, we have visual designs drawn up for characters who don't have a single line of dialogue in the current script. What we do have, mostly in sync, are the first group of quests given to the player. I'm talking the introduction of some of the key characters, basic plot setup, and light tutorializing that all leads up to the first narrative battle. The battle itself, uh, we'll leave that for another build. With some effort, we were able to get all the writing done and at least placeholder art for all the characters and locations. We've also updated the UI with way more functionality than we had back in the original prototype build, including an inventory and a quest log. But the visuals are still quite placeholder and a bit behind what we've already got in mock-up screenshots. But back to the story script. As I alluded to earlier, work had to be done to get the story script actually into the game. Which, yes, means that we don't write our game script directly into our game dev software at Unity. I mean, we have a lot of text in this game, and it varies and branches depending on what you do. That would be a nightmare. So we write in something else, and I'm not talking about Microsoft Word or something like that. We have a software that is specifically designed for this kind of situation. This is Artisy Draft. Odyssey Draft is a really powerful external app that lets you map out your game's entire story as a visual web. Just at a glance, you can tell what text is in what node, when the text splits into two different possible choices, and so on and so on. We here at Studio Hipsword are big proponents of Odyssey, actually. We used it to map out all the dialogue in our last game, Hip Witch. I mean, here we are featured on the official uh, Odyssey website, next to, um, 
Is that, is that Disco Elysium? Yep, we're playing with the big boys. But anyway, the important point here is that Odyssey is designed to let us import everything that we made here into our game engine. So you might be wondering, if Odyssey is designed for this specific purpose, why are we talking about it like it's difficult? Well, Odyssey's just a tool, it's not omnipotent. It doesn't actually know what the Siege of Jamdo is. It doesn't know where to spawn the quests, when to spawn the quests, how to update the quest logs, or about a day-night system, or, or anything. It's, it's just a tool. So our programmer, Heinrich, had two tasks in order to solve this problem. Number one is to do some things in the code that I do not understand and won't pretend to. But number two was to create special template nodes in Odyssey for us to incorporate into our scripts. See, most of our script in Odyssey is made up of dialogue nodes. These nodes feed the game text to show when we press the continue button and, if applicable, which character art to pull up. Heinrich's new node types allow us to fill in those Siege of Jamdo specific gaps I mentioned a moment ago. The Hide After Scene node allows us to create a dialogue option that vanishes after being read for the first time. This is helpful for if we want to, say, make a list of optional conversation topics that the player exhausts before moving forwards. But the most important of these new nodes would probably be the ones that manage the quest system. Now the old prototype build didn't even have a quest journal, so there was no need to track such things. Each scene opens with an origin node and a starting node. An origin node registers the scene within the game and decides which quest it's related to. In this case, Shanti Temple Visit. A starting node contains information like which in-game day the scene becomes available on and where it can be found on the map. There's also how many in-game actions it costs, y you get the idea. These are just a few examples of types of nodes that help our game function. The cool thing is that now that these tools exist, we can dictate so much of the structure of the game without even entering Unity just at the writing stage. That's assuming the way we put together these Odyssey scripts and the programming itself holds up to any level of basic playtesting. So once we got this build up and running, how was playtesting? Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be coy about this. It was rough. Let's not delve into the countless spelling and grammatical errors that only became obvious once we saw them in-game, despite having been proofread multiple times in Odyssey. I swear Studio Hipsword is literate, I promise you. We experienced many egregious bugs, many of them game-destroying. We were constantly going back and forth from testing to fixing to rebuilding the build over the last few days of the goal. We completely forgot to put in a bunch of the character art, and then when we did add them in, they were all stretched or floating Ghostbusters style. We had incomplete dead-end dialogue paths that forced you to restart the game. We actually had a bunch of commands in Odyssey that were meant to tell the game when to change the background. And for some reason, they weren't working in the build. It turns out Heinrich somehow, like, deleted or lost the code that does that, like it was just gone. <laughs> But those are all mundane bugs. I want to end off this segment with a slightly more uncanny and existential bug. So as I said before, the story script in this build has been completely rewritten from the original prototype build, right? There's entirely new scenes, character interpretations, and all that. The thing is, we never got rid of the original script. It still exists within Odyssey. So when we started playtesting this new build, Scenes from both versions of the story were triggering all through the game. It's pretty weird seeing all these repeating ideas, like receiving two slightly different letters from the same long-lost wife. Imagine two alternate realities converging on top of each other. It's the kind of bizarre, surreal problem only game dev can bring you. You know, like those guys with no skin in that one Assassin's Creed game or whatever. So yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say about our February build, which we completed in March. So what are the important takeaways here? Well, first of all, it's insanely valuable to get a good look at what you're actually making. There were some pleasant surprises in playtesting about how well some scenes landed with all parts of the production working together, although some other scenes clearly needed some extra work, either from a writing standpoint or a presentational one. 
Of course, there's also many technical concerns. This build is far from perfect, but now we're actually able to ascertain where and how we need to make improvements to get it closer to the end goal. From here on out, I think we've got two major tasks. The first is to quickly map out a draft of the entire story so that we have a full understanding of project scope. The second is to polish the early game content further until we have a nice vertical slice of what the game will ideally be like at the end of development. This is helpful not only for our own understanding and peace of mind, but also for potentially pitching our game to publishers who could help us finish the game with funding, if we are extremely, extremely lucky. Uh, regardless, continuing to make regular builds is the best way to achieve these goals, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, before you go, it would mean a lot to us if you kept up with our game dev journey by subscribing to this channel or following us on social media. We're active on Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and even TikTok, so pick your poison. If you join our official Discord server, you can gain access to detailed weekly updates and chat to the team about whatever. If you really want to be a homie, the best thing you can do is wishlist The Siege of John Doe on Steam. Not only will you be notified when the game releases, you'll help boost our visibility in the algorithm, and every bit counts. Links can be found in the description or our official website. Oh, and we also stream on Twitch. Um, check out Twitter and Discord to, to know when. Uh...